Hey guys, welcome back to Math Principles. Today we're going to take a look at graphing quadratic functions. And to do that, we're going to start with something that we're familiar with graphing, linear functions. If I have the linear function y equals mx plus b, we could make an xy chart to, make, to sketch this graph, or we can just use what we know about the slope, which is m, and the y-intercept, which is b, to sketch a pretty perfect graph. Okay, B is where this line crosses the y-axis, which is right here. Okay, so this point is 0, B. Okay, and then we know the slope is how many steps it goes up divided by how many steps it goes over. So we can use this information to sketch a pretty good graph of any linear function. I'd say even a perfect graph of any linear function. For instance, they ask us to sketch a graph of y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 2. So I know that it's going to go through the y-axis right here at 0, 2. And I know that it's going to go down 2 and to the right 1, 2, 3. Okay, So I can sketch another point. And then if I have a straight edge, I can use it. If not, uh, I can do a couple tricks. Well, I have this. So I can draw a perfectly straight line through those two points. Now, ideally, we'd like to have three points. But for our purposes, this two is going to be just as good. Okay, now, if we know about the graph, okay, if we know about the slope and the y-intercept, we can create this graph almost perfectly without really calculating any points at all. Okay, we don't really have to do any math at all, just know a little bit about how the function works. Well, for a parabola, it's a little bit more, for a quadratic function, I should say, it's a little bit more complex, but it's still the same kind of thing. When I look at this function, where I have y equals a times the quantity x minus h, the quantity squared, plus k, I had you guys using Desmos the other day to try to figure out what each of these do to the graph. And hopefully you notice that a either flips the graph or stretches it or uh, makes it fatter or skinnier. Okay, so this affects the curve. Okay, this makes the graph uh, thinner or wider and flips it. Okay, and hopefully you notice that H shifted the graph left and right, and K shifted the graph up and down. That's because the ordered pair HK is the vertex. Okay, it's where that graph switches. It's where it turns around. So if I start this graph right here on the left side, and I slide along this curve, right here at this point, it turns around and it starts coming back up. Okay, that's called the vertex, where the graph turns around. Now, guys, we can use this information to sketch a pretty good, uh, a nice graph. Okay, as long as we know this information about the function, we can sketch a pretty reasonable graph. Now, there are some uh, things that we can use, some very special points that we can use to make our graph better. Okay, on the linear function, we had the y-intercept, uh, okay, and that's going to be an important part for us here. But more important for us is the vertex. Okay, if we sketch that vertex, we know that this is going to be either a maximum or, like this graph, a minimum. Now, maximum and minimum refers to the whole graph. Okay, Is it the lowest point on the graph, in which case it's a minimum? Or if this parabola goes the other way, if it's upside down, then it's a maximum, it's the very top of that graph. And the other thing that's important for us are the x-intercepts, which are also called roots or zeros. Now, those points are where this function crosses the x-axis, okay? So these are our roots. The y-intercept, okay, is where that function crosses the y-axis, right here, okay? And the vertex we talked about is where that graph turns around, right here, okay? So with those points, we can sketch a really good graph. Now, I notice here I said, if real. We saw when we were solving quadratics that sometimes our solutions to a quadratic function were uh, involved i. Okay, those were imaginary numbers. Those were non-real solutions. And you saw that on some of the calculators. No real solution. Those are going to be graphs that do not cross the x-axis. And we'll see a couple of those along the way. Okay, now let's put this into practice and take a look at a couple of examples here. Okay, if we get those, we need to get those key points from the graph, and we get them pretty easily from this function. Okay, so first off, hk is our vertex, and that's where the graph is going to start. It's 
to the very center of our graph. And it's really important to note, in the function we see, whoop, this should be x minus h. Not h minus h, that would be zero. Okay, so we have x minus h, the quantity squared. And what's really important is that this is minus h. So whatever number we see here, we need to keep in mind, we need to take the opposite because the formula has minus. So when we take that h out, we need to take the opposite sign. Now k is by itself, it's just plus k. And that ordered pair is the vertex of this graph. If we want the y-intercept, we'll put zero in for x and find the y value. If we want the x-intercept, we'll sub zero for y and we'll solve for x. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look at this graph. Okay, look at this equation. And we're gonna find the key points. So we're gonna find the vertex, the y-intercept and the x-intercept. We're gonna describe that vertex as either a maximum or a minimum, and then we'll sketch our graph. Okay, well, let's take a look. The vertex is gonna be the easiest one to come up with. So let's start there. HK, the vertex, is going to be equal to, now we said, H is whatever is subtracted from X. So X minus two, that means that two is the H. And K is whatever's added on at the end, and that's negative nine. Okay, so with H, we take the opposite. With K, we keep the sign. Okay, now uh, we also wanna find our Y intercept. Oop, what happened here? There we go. Okay, now the y-intercept, what we're going to do is sub in 0 in place of x and solve for y. All right, so I'll do y equals, or the y-intercept equals, 1 fourth times the quantity x or 0 minus 2 quantity squared minus 9. Well, 0 minus 2 is negative 2 squared. Negative 2 squared is positive 4, so I have 1 fourth times 4, which is going to be 1 minus 9. And my y-intercept is going to be the ordered pair 0, negative 8. Okay, now I want to find the x-intercept. And to find the x-intercept, we sub 0 in place of y and solve for x. So 0 equals 1 fourth times the quantity x minus 2, quantity squared minus 9. Okay, so we'll add 9 to both sides. Okay, then we will uh, multiply both sides by 4 over 1. Okay, remember divide by 1 fourth is the same as multiplying the by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 1 fourth is 4 over 1, or simply 4. So now on the left side, uh, 4 times 9 is 36 equals the quantity x minus 2, quantity squared. Okay, now... The opposite of squaring is to take the square root. So when I take the square root on each side, whoop, there we go, I will have plus or minus, don't forget that plus or minus, 6. Okay, positive or negative 6 equals x minus 2. Okay, now if I add 2 to both sides, I will get that x is equal to 2 plus or minus 6 equals x. Okay, which means that our x-intercepts are at 2 plus 6 is 8, 0, and 4, negative 4, 0. Okay, now I'm going to shrink this down just a little bit to give ourselves a little more space to work here. Okay, now, the directions up here say to find those key points, which we did, and then describe the vertex as a maximum or a minimum.
Okay, well, how do we know that? How do we know whether it's a max or a min? Well, it's real simple, guys. Remember what we said about A. A determines the shape of the graph. Okay, we said that if A is negative, that's going to flip the graph upside down. Otherwise, it's going to open upward in a U shape. So if this one has a vertex at 2, negative 9, okay, so let's tell you what, let's sketch the axes. And it has a vertex at 2, so go over 2, come down 9. And we're just sketching, so our graph's not going to be perfect. So here's 2, negative 9. There's our vertex. Now, our K, or excuse me, our A is 1 fourth. It's positive, so it's opening upward. So does that mean this vertex, if this is right here, and our graph has to open upward, that means that that uh, vertex is going to be a minimum. So we'll come back up here, and we'll say that that is a minimum. All right, and then we'll sketch the rest of the graph. So here is the ordered pair two, negative nine. Okay, we know that it goes through zero, negative eight, so just a little bit higher up. And we know that the solutions are at eight, zero, and negative four, zero. Okay, now guys, our graph's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Okay, and we didn't have to go through finding a whole bunch of x, y points, okay, just a couple of, uh, using a little bit of algebra, finding the important points on the graph, okay? Now, this isn't as quick as it is for a linear function, but it's a whole lot faster than if we were to have to go through and find all of the x, y points, okay? So, let's take a look now at this one. You know, this one might be a little trickier, but that's okay. We'll take our time, and we'll get through it. Okay, so first off, let's find our vertex. Okay, so our vertex is the ordered pair hk, and h is what's being subtracted from x, but the catch is, guys, I see x plus 1, so I need to take the opposite. My h is going to be negative 1, and my k is whatever is added on at the end, 2. So my hk is the ordered pair negative 1, 2. I'll tell you what, I'll sketch this graph, and that will be here as well. Okay, next up. The y-intercept. Wow, I'm in a little trouble there. Okay, the y-intercept will sub in 0 in place of x. So I'll have 0 plus 1 quantity squared plus 2. Okay, 0 plus 1 is 1 squared plus 2. 1 squared is 1 plus 2 is 3. So my y-intercept is the ordered pair 0 3. Okay, uh, now we want the x-intercepts. So for the x-intercepts, which remember are also called the roots or the zeros, okay, for these, we sub in 0 in place of y. So we'll say 0 equals the quantity x plus 1, quantity squared plus 2. And we'll solve for x. So we'll subtract 2 from each side, and we'll have negative 2 equals the quantity x plus 1 quantity squared. Now right here, when we take the square root on each side, okay, on the right side that's easy, squared and square root cancel and I get x plus 1. On the left side, remember when we take the square root of a negative, we bring out i. So we would have i times the square root of 2, okay, plus or minus i times the square root of 2. Now this guy's right here, that i means that these roots are imaginary. They're not real. So we don't have to find any roots because we're not going to have roots on our graph. Okay? So this is everything that we need to sketch this graph. Okay, so we'll sketch some axes. And our ordered pair is negative 1, 2, y intercept 0, 3. Okay. All right, so let's put our y-intercept, which is the, or excuse me, our vertex, which is negative 1, so go left 1 and up 2. Our y-intercept, which is the ordered pair 0, 3. Okay, and we have no roots. We have no roots at all. 
okay? Or excuse me, I should say we have no real roots. So the, one of the questions was, is that vertex a maximum or a minimum? Well, remember the way that we know is by this number right here that multiplies that quantity, A. Well, in this case, A is one, which means that this graph is gonna open upward. Okay, so if I sketch a graph opening upward, okay, let's try to do a little better job here. There we go. Okay, sketch a graph opening upward, I can see that this vertex is a minimum. Okay, and we can abbreviate that. We can just call it a min or a max for a maximum. So both of these ended up being minimums. Okay, A was positive, so those graphs opened upwards. Okay, and our vertex, uh, we had a vertex HK for each of those. We used those subbed in zero in place of X, found our Y intercepts subbed in zero in place of y and solve for our x-intercepts or our roots. Okay? If we have real roots, we'll put those on the graph. But if we have imaginary roots, those aren't going to show up on the graph. Okay? So if we want to sketch a graph of a quadratic function, okay, what we're going to do is find our vertex, our y-intercept, and our x-intercepts. Okay? And the way that we're going to describe this as a maximum or minimum is going to tell us, should this graph open upward or downward? It's also going to force us to examine that A. Okay, because if A is a big number, okay, whether if it's a positive big number, it's going to be narrow opening upward. If it's a, po or a large negative number, it's going to be narrow opening downward. But if A is a big old fraction, okay, that's going to cause this graph to be a whole lot wider either opening up or down. Okay, so we look at the function, analyze it just like we would with the linear function, take out what we need, build our graph based on it.